Right then, it's D-Day for the dragon. I've got uh, the dragon ready here, together with another four buckles. I'll see what I can fit on the mould. Um, this is the point where everything that you've made so far can fall to pieces without any result. Hopefully that won't happen. The mould can here, cast a, or a steel mould can, um, it's been preheated to 150 degrees, ready to take these, and I have to start now assembling the mould. Take these off for a minute. Using black organic rubber. Again, these have been warmed through. First thing to do is to dust the can. Not so talc. First part of the rubber in. Make sure that's sat nicely. Remember to put your glove back on again, otherwise you dance about like a fool. Put the centre core in and dust again. Make sure you get right up to the edges. The purpose of the talc is twofold. It stops the next part of the rubber sticking to the first, so you've got the two halves of the mould. And it's also when you put the pressure on, because these moulds are vulcanised with heat and pressure and everything squashed down, is to allow um, air to escape. Because you don't want air trapped within the mould. Right, let's just lay these out and see what I've got room for. Uh, let's see, where am I going to have the entry point? You have to bear in mind also the metal flow in and the air flow out, where I'm actually going to put the vents and how I want the metal to flow into the, the piece. Push that in place gently. That should be fine like that. Okay, let's see what else I've got room for. Just try and get a balance on here. on the top of that. Here goes the risky bit. It's obviously very hot and very heavy. Slide that into the press. So, well here's the moment of truth, the mould can has just come out, and uh, now about to split it and see what we get. Then you have to remember this is 150 degrees C, so it's very very hot. Everything seems to have vulcanised. Let's get rid of that. Right. Okay, that seems to be okay. There's a fair bit of air in there, which I'm a little concerned about. You can see it's puffed up. Get something down the side of that. Well, it looks disastrous. Let's hope that the mould took the image. I'll bring the camera over. You can see the state of the poor dragon model as it is now. 
absolutely decimated in the mould. Function of the heat, these are the other ones as well. Function of the heat and pressure. I've just got to clean the mould out now and see if it's actually got the, the image safely. Fingers crossed. Right, that's just about all the debris out of the mould. Um, you see the two halves of the image there. Looking good so far. Obviously won't know until we cast it. Not looking good for the model however. <laughs> That's what's left. I came to the conclusion many years ago that you can't really, on a model that intricate, expect to get them out in one piece. So I really make them to be destroyed within the mould. As long as the socket is uh, is clean, um, that's all I can really expect. Um, to try and get them out, I'd have to use silicon or a softer rubber and be far more gentle, which has a problem as much as the silicon isn't so robust. And you end up with other problems as well. So you quite often then found, or I, when I first did it, I found that I had moulds that failed and they broke the, the piece anyway. So I designed it just to, just to break up in the mould now. The next step is to cut the mould. Um, let's have a go at that. The first step in cutting the mould is to cut the, the inlet where the pewter will be spun. The pewter comes through the centre of the mould and bearing in mind which direction the mould spins, the pewter is then thrown out by centrifugal force towards the different sockets, towards the different pieces. So we have to cut an inlet for that. Um, you really need a very sharp blade. Some people use um, specialised cutters, but a good Stanley blade is as good. I'll just do this one. Just cut the inlet there. Turn it. Bring that through to the bowl in the centre. Then cut it from the bowl back out through back to the piece. Pull it out and there you can see we've got a, a nice neat channel for the metal to flow into the piece itself. Okay what we also need is to get the air out of the pieces so when it's spinning and the metal comes into the different buckles in this case the air needs to be able to get out and to do that we cut um, vents so again I take that from here out to the very outside I can see where I just cut so I go alongside that out to the outside there So bear in mind that when the metal's being forced into the socket, you wouldn't want a vent straight off the other side to take the metal straight out again. So take it from the piece back to the centre, like that, as long as you can. On there, and off any point. It might need a little bit of help to fill where air might get trapped in it. I'll take another one off there, though it might not actually be necessary. But I do want this to get a good a good fill. Well, there's all the Inlets and vents cut in the uh, the Dragon and the others. Um, just about ready to try the first spin. Fingers crossed there. Um, it'll take quite a few spins to burn out all the the rest of the debris and the rubbish and the powder to get a nice clean one. Um, but we'll give it a go and see what we get out of the first spin. 
We're now getting ready to do the first spin on the mould with the dragon. I've got the melting pot with the pewter in, which is all nice and clean. Um, the casting machine is, I've set it on around uh, about three minutes spin, uh, spin time and quite a slow speed um, because potentially there's quite a lot of weight of metal in there and reduce the chance of flashing. Um, okay, here we go. Put the mould in. I'll take some more shots of this in a little while so you can have a look from the top. Plate on the top. Okay, everything seems to be all right on here. Um, and the new rude buckles I put on there. Um, they've obviously come in a nice and easy ones, nice straightforward, they've come out okay. The dragon, one or two little bits to tidy up on it, um, but everything seems to be okay. There's a little bit of flashing at the top there, but it should be quite an easy clean up. Um, so I'll now break that out. Right, all my buckles are hand trimmed, hand finished, so every single one has to be trimmed to cut the flashing off. Sometimes I do it with a drill and a cutter, but something like this it's better to get in with a knife and give a good old cut down. Make sure all the details right as well. Doesn't take long. Buckles now blackened. This can be done either by acid dipping or in this case with a coating um, still a little bit tacky actually but I want to show how this is finished so I'll now mop it I've used the satining mop to get the most off, but highlights are much better with a with a cutting mop, which I'm now about to pick one or two out just to make a give a bit more shine. Well that's just, I don't know if you can pick it up on there, but just giving a few highlights and a bit of shine to the buckle. Um, really less is more on that, you don't really want to take too much of the detail away. Just a few little bits of sparkle. The next step is to lacquer, which I'm now about to do. Well, at long last, here's the finished buckle. The dragon buckle with highlights, it's an antique pewter, um, all done, just ready for photography. You can see if I move that, it's got lots of sparkle on it. It's not too heavy to wear, actually it's not too bad at all. Fine, very happy with that, I'm pleased the way that turned out.